Hey, it's Bill the Computer Guy up here in Northern California. How y'all doing today? Today we're looking at a Toshiba satellite laptop and we come up with this error here. Now I've tried to in install or have it boot up to a, uh, a recovery uh, uh, repair disk and it will not boot up to a recovery repair disk and we come up with this error this error is as you can see the a 0xc with six zeros and an e and it says boot selection failed uh, required device is inaccessible so this means to me, I'm going to guess that the hard drive has failed. I've already tried to reseat the RAM and I've already tried to do a hard restart. Of course, reseating the RAM is fairly simple. Just simply take the RAM cover off and make sure that the contacts are clean on the RAM uh, chips and reseat them and that didn't solve the problem. You also want to make sure that your hard drive is securely in its um, place. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pull the hard drive out of this and then we're going to um, put it in a external uh, hard drive case and put it into another computer and see if we can access this hard drive from another computer and try and do a uh, virus cleanup and or uh, fix file system uh, utility on it. Yeah, so this screen is actually the resulting screen from trying to start it up in safe mode. And on this particular Toshiba satellite, the safe mode is the F8 key. And so, and this is what I come up, this is basically the error that I come up with um, when starting the system, trying to start the system along uh, normally. Okay, so this is my Toshiba PSA. GOU. Um, 02D 00M. And so we looked at the hard drive. You see, this hard drive is securely in place. It doesn't seem like it's going to be a loose hard drive. So that's probably not going to be the problem. What we're going to do is the hard restart. The hard restart is basically uh, removing the battery. Take your battery out, push the on button on your uh, computer, and hold the button for about one minute, and just hold that button down for about one minute. And after you've held it down, going to plug your power into your computer and then try the and see if the computer will boot up and so I've already tried this and I haven't had any success and so what we're going to do is we're going to pull the hard drive and install it uh, externally on another computer and see what it's doing also, I've already tried to reseat this RAM here. Simply pulling out the RAM and put, putting it back in, make sure, make sure the contacts are clean, and putting it and make sure it is seated properly in its seat. Okay, so here's what it does when we try and boot it normally. It'll give you the option to um, launch repair or start normally. If you have the, um, 
the original operating system disk. You can put your original operating system disk in and it may repair. On this old of a uh, computer, it's very likely that the hard drive has failed. And so, um, it's not very likely that um, it's going to respond to a startup and it definitely will not start uh, Windows normally. Okay, we're going to try uh, launch the setup. Okay, and then we have that error. So, um, it's, and if we start, start it normally, we see the Windows splash screen come up briefly and then back to this uh, device is not in, uh, accessible. So we'll pull the hard drive and take a look at it. Okay, so before I examine the hard drive, I wanted to try this. Just to boot it without the hard drive in it, I've pulled the hard drive out. And we're going to press F12 on this particular Toshiba to get it to go into the boot menu. And then we're going to just set it to CD, DVD, and this is a recovery disk, uh, Windows recovery disk that I'm running. And then we're going to run it, we're going to set it into Windows Mini XP. And you can buy these on eBay, they're pretty cool. And basically you can test your system out to make sure that your system is working and it's not your hard drive. Now there is also a possibility that if the computer has been setting for a long time that you have a uh, low or bad BIOS battery. Um, so you always want to check to make sure that your BIOS battery is good and um, because some computers will not boot if your BIOS battery is not up to snuff so to speak. That's a technical term. Anyway, uh, so it's booting into this Windows. And let's see if we can check the hard drive, or the, uh, no, we can't check the hard drive. But basically, we're, we're running the computer. The operating system is running from the RAM. And so we can see that um, the computer itself seems to be working fine. This shows only two gigs of RAM, three gigs of three gigs of RAM. That's possibly all this computer could take. This this computer actually has um four two um two um, two gigs of RAM sticks and that's possibly all this computer can handle at this point so anyway we see that this basically computer is working and so the problem at this point seems to be in the hard drive itself and this particular hard drive has a very expensive in some avenues uh, proprietary software on that we're going to try and uh, salvage. I don't normally do um, hard drive uh, forensics and or uh, hard drive rebuilding all I can do is um, basically the simple uh, 
recovery techniques that are that are uh, that are usable um, uh, through your typical operating system. And so let's see, let's see if we can do that recovery operation from this XP program. So if we go to my computer, uh, we have uh, we have the hard drive hard drive removed. I'm not sure if the hard drive will be accessible from this program or not. Um, we could pop it in real quick and take a look. Okay, so it seems that we can get into this hard drive from this boot disk. Um, and so if we just go into, so basically from here, we go to my computer and then we'll see C drive here and then we're going to right click and go to properties and then we're going to go to tools well, let's look at the hardware the hardware uh, western digital western digital 500 not my favorite model drive but I sold a lot of them okay so what we're going to do is check the volume for errors and of course this is going to take a while what we're going to do is uh, we're going to check automatically fix file system errors Um, so actually what we're going to do is we're going to scan and attempt to recover bad sectors first and then we'll uh, try the fixed file system errors okay so that was quick okay we're going to try it again I automatically fix file system errors and then if this doesn't work what we're going to try and do is we're going to pull the hard drive and then do the same thing as well as scan the hard drive for viruses although i don't believe this computer was on the internet much because it was basically from what i understand a sole use computer for a biofeedback program and so I, I have my doubts that this is going to work, so I believe we're going to have to pull the hard drive. Um, being that this is a used uh, Western Digital hard drive, probably reached its normal lifespan, and. Uh, I'm going to probably think that this hard drive is shot. Um, I may install another hard drive. Um, with a copy of the biofeedback software on it. Um, there are free versions of bio, of the of biofeedback software and if you're interested in that you can contact me okay so this is actually the boot uh the boot disk uh menu and so here we can go into uh memory tests uh we can do the password changer um Now we have the Seagate uh, disk wizard, but we don't have a Seagate hard drive, so that might not work. We have here partition magic, which could probably work. Uh, 
a departed parted magic uh, takes a while to load usually and so but it's a, a fairly comprehensive program that we can, uh, don't have to pull the hard drive to gain quite a bit of information okay so this is partition magic and so we see here that we have our parted 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 magic and we see we have a disk health option here and so let's check this out <laughs> thank you for the applause guys <laughs> let's try that again I like that <laughs> hello it's me thank you thank you hold the applause please thank you okay so anyway, uh, yeah, we have the disc help here. Well, let's see what happens. Uh, actually, I I don't remember. Uh, open as text uh, properties. Okay, so this is this may not have anything to do with what I'm doing here okay let's see what else we got here Firefox we, basically we can see the computer is running fine and the problem with the problem is and this has a disk disk cloner this has clonezilla as a, also as a disk eraser program and for those of you who want their data erased i do that as well you can contact me laptops repaired at yahoo.com i also clone discs if you have a failed computer and you want to keep your hard drive and your old data on a similar motherboard it doesn't always work with different motherboards but uh, if you have a similar motherboard in your new computer we can normally uh, take your old data and put it on a new uh, computer and on a new hard drive. Okay, so let's see what we got here. What's the system profiler? System profiler. This is all loaded up on the RAM. It's not on the hard drive. So... This actually may be the system profiler here. And let's see, CPU uh, usage 2%, um, battery 41%, um, remaining time 59 minutes. Uh, let's see. Uh, So basically it gives some data here that's changing so to me it indicates that we have a completely functional computer it's just that the hard drive has failed in some way and so it looks like I'm going to take this hard drive out and Um, scan it separately uh, let's see we have system tools here and I'm not sure uh, we can do what we want here disk health uh, let's see what that is uh, G smart control Okay, so we have Western Digital. Let's see. Uh, and let's see what options we have here. 
view execution log okay let's see uh, resolving permission problems how to enable smart reporting bugs about so let's see I'm not sure how to use this and so somebody has out there and they could probably tell me and it's probably had a lot of luck with this program but I have never used it and so um, let's see what we can do here right click re read data perform tests okay perform tests okay so we have some tests here we can perform without removing the hard drive this is part parted magic and like I said it's on this rescue disc that I bought on eBay and let's see what we can do perform test short self test okay let's try this uh, Two minutes. Test completed. Okay, so this is going to test the hard drive. It's probably, it may not be a mechanical issue. It may be a software issue. The, it may have picked up a virus that destroyed. Um, some firmware there is a possibility that's what the new program the new operating system have in them uh, they are susceptible to bugs virus spyware that can destroy firmware and then you're looking at major uh, repairs at that point so that's why I like Windows 7 and Linux. Okay, so we got 40-50%. Uh, short self-test consists of collecting a collection of test routines uh, uh, for detecting drive problems. Is, is, its result is reported in the self-test log. Uh, this test is in no way a comprehensive one. Its main purpose is to detect totally damaged drives without running a full surface scan. On some drives, it actually runs several sequences of tests, which may cause the program to display test uh, progress incor incorrectly. So this is new, it's like every day is new, right? Like the song goes. Okay, so it says self-test building test within the drive. Now see this test came, it's completed without error. So there is a software problem, there's a Windows software problem with this drive it's not the drive itself it is the software and so what we're going to do is we're going to run a we're going to pull the hard drive and run a virus scan uh, with another computer so and then see if we can um, recover bad sectors 
and or files and uh, as well do a um, do a uh, disk fragmentation and anything else we can do remotely to try in um, see if we can bring this operating system back to health and then we may actually um, try and use the Windows 7 disk to recover that way uh, and see what happens. Okay, I have my hard drive in my external docking station and we have it up on the computer and so basically what we're going to do is now we can't open the file this is J drive Um, but we're not going to open the file directly. What we're going to do is we're going to go into my computer. Uh, now, keep in mind, this is a separate computer. So this is not the original computer. This is a separate computer. We got some sort of storm happening here. And then we're going to go to my computer and then we'll see here J drive. J drive is right there. And so what we're going to do, we can see the properties. It only has 270 gigabytes used. And so it's not overfilled, so that's good. And so first thing we're going to do is we're going to do we're going to scan we're going to scan with malware bytes. So we're going to scan this for um, viruses. First thing we're going to do. And this is not taking very long um, at this point. And so we've already scanned 280 objects and we have no viruses. So that's good. And so the next thing we're going to do is probably scan and repair file system errors and or recover bad sectors and see if we can pull this hard drive back to life okay so this took about an hour and I have another program I'm going to scan it with and we can see we have 56 what does it say 56 identified threats that are selected to be removed yeah, these are, looks like all potentially unwanted programs. MindSpark, FunWeb products. And so I'm going to take these all off. Here we have Audio Toolbar. You have to be careful because sometimes if you take yeah, a vital program on off, then it basically uh, may not allow your computer to work right. But since this computer was given to me with the potential to give it back, I'm just going to erase. I'm going to remove all these. Basically, they're. It's is potentially unwanted programs, basically is what they are.
And the problem with some of these uh, potentially unwanted programs is that they may leave back doors open uh, to your computer. And so what I'm going to do is I have this other program I'm going to run on it. This is called Super Anti Spyware. And it's a pretty quick program, but I'm going to run a complete scan. You have to run a complete scan to access your uh, remote hard drive. Your um, So... We will do that. And we're going to close the internet browsers. And we'll see what happens. I'm just going to let this thing roll. Uh, this may be the end of the video. So hopefully you get the idea. And if you need any help, you can contact me. Laptops repaired at yahoo.com. I also have access to... Um, a lot of technical information so uh, if you need any help contact me I also give phone advice for $25 you can call me 707-599-4489 you can call or text that number thanks okay so this is a different computer but it has the uh, access to the BIOS battery and so basically you want to check that BIOS battery and make sure that it has voltage on this particular one it has very uh, small contacts and those little two little solder kits next to that socket or where you can measure the voltage on this particular HP. Uh, it's just that little round black thing right there. And that is your BIOS battery. Some computers will not boot up if that BIOS battery is bad. And this one here, <clears throat> and some computers, they will not charge that battery if the regular battery is in place. So you might want to try, if your battery is down, you might want to try and <clears throat> turn your computer on uh, without the battery and let that BIOS battery charge up. Ideally, you just want to replace it. And so, let's see. If we look at our hard drive here, and this has been running for at least um, probably 45 minutes at least. I've also run the Super Anti Spyware and come up with like 40 uh, problems that I just fixed. So here once again basically we have the, the hard drive in an external uh, docking station on a separate computer and we're looking at the uh, disk uh, through the separate computer and we're we found several bits of malware on it probably over a hundred bits of malware on it that I scanned separately and then here we're, we're checking the we're checking uh, for bad sectors and trying to recover bad sectors. And so what I do is I try to uh, recover bad sector first and then I try to uh, try the uh, fix file system errors second. And so that's just my way of doing it. And we'll see. I'm kind of doubtful this is going to bring it up. I'm afraid we're going to have to try and use the disk, uh, the Windows uh, operating system disk to bring this one back to life. 
Uh, I'm not sure. There's very good likely that the proprietary biofeedback software has also been corrupt. Um, so I'm, I'm not real hopeful with this one, but this may bring some hard drives back to life. And so, yeah, you might want to give it a try or if you want, you can send me your old computer and I can do it for you. It's Bill's Enterprises, P.O. Box 7021, Eureka, California, 95502. Okay, back to this one again. What well, basically what we're doing is we're trying to charge the BIOS battery. And we have the regular battery is out of it. The regular battery is pulled out. And there is no battery. We also have the uh charger plugged in. And so and then we're leaving it on. And this one has no screen. It's, and we've already checked the RAM. So it's likely this one has a bad video chip. Bad video chip on this one. Very likely. Okay. So here's the report on the bad sector uh, re repair. Basically it says uh, some problems were found and fixed. So I don't know if this is going to bring us back to life or not. Next we need to... Uh, we need to scan uh, to recover the files. So basically, once again, we go here to tools and then check drive for errors. And then here we're going to automatically fix the file system errors. And that may take a while. Uh, looks like I've got the wrong drive here. Looks like J. Okay, so for some reason it doesn't want to check this without restarting. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to... We'll have to restart it. <clears throat> and when we restart it, you want to, you probably want to disconnect your external drive before you restart it and reconnect it just as it's booting up or after it's booted up. Okay, so we forced dismount of that, and now it's checking the file system errors. And so, look at the hard drive caddy there. You'll see that red light seems to be doing something. And so, it's checking the file system errors, and hopefully it will be able to uh, bring it back to life. Now this doesn't take very long. This is not taking very long. The, the sector repair was almost an hour. And so, yeah, hopefully we'll bring it back. I'll, let you know one way or another okay so here we've done the file system repair it says basically problems were found and fixed so we're going to remove the hard drive from the external station and install it reinstall it into the computer and keep our fingers crossed uh, if that doesn't work 
I may have to put the original operating system disk in and try and repair it from there. And if we can't do that, then looks like we're going to put another operating system over the old and reinstall some of the software that was on it. Now let's let's take a quick look here. Uh, some of these programs you can grab from the disk and so for instance we go here and we open it up we can see that there are some programs here we can grab and put on a flash drive and then um, Put it on a flash drive and reinstall it in another computer. So, some uh, programs will jump and some will not. And so, this program actually has the whole, looks like. A entire uh, installation uh, package in it for the program that I'm looking for and I actually may want to copy this right here and save it to my desktop depending upon what version it is let's see this is created so it's a, looks like a 12.12 version, which is probably not what I'm looking for at this point. But I can save that. That is a whole installation package. And I can save it on my desktop. You can see it's going to take a while to do. And But anyway... Looks like fun, huh? <laughs> okay, so here's our Toshiba. It did not come right up. Let's see if we can start it normally. It will start. Okay, it looks like this one is back to life again. And it's very likely it was a result of Um, spyware, virus, something like that. And I'm so glad to get this back together for my friend because uh, she paid several hundred dollars for the software. And uh, I actually sold her She's got the Windows updates turned on. Now I'm going to turn the Windows updates off just because I'm going to tell her that this computer is supposed to be a sole computer for her biofeedback software. And then ask her to stay off the internet with it. Um, so... Okay, looks like this one's going back and uh, ready to rock and roll. Thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. If you need any help, you can contact me 707-443-8347, Pacific Time 9 to 5. I give phone advice for $25 and or you can send me your computer. If you'd like, email is laptopsrepaired at yahoo.com. Okay, these are the programs that I normally put on my computers. The first one is going to be the C Cleaner. Right here, this one up on the left. Uh, C Cleaner. If you go on the internet, you probably want to use this one if you're using Windows. 
and you just want to click once on this run cleaner and this will permanently delete your uh, temporary files uh, usually it will ask if you want to save s certain cookies I always do not use that function I always um, I always erase everything, all my temporary files. And that's how easy it is to do. Once this loads up to, this is a first time application, so it's taking a little bit longer than normal. It's a very quick program. And there it is. And it actually shows your operating system. This is a 32-bit system with a dual core, 4 gigs of RAM. Uh, anyway, that's basically how easy that is. And the next program I usually use is the Super Anti Spyware. And if you're using Windows, and this is what it looks like. Down here you'll see Check for Updates. And once a week you want to put updates in and basically you click on scan this computer and then you do quick scan the quick scan is what I normally do if I suspect anything I'll do a complete scan if you have an external hard drive you can do a complete scan and we'll scan the external hard drive so we're just going to do a quick scan and this is a fairly quick program it's like one of the quickest programs uh, that I found to clean up problems. Normally the seat cleaner will dump anything that is potentially hazardous if you've been searching the internet but just as an extra precaution I use the Super Anti Spyware uh, program. And so the other program that I put on here was of course the Spooky 2. The Spooky 2 uh, should be loaded up here uh, let's see, might be, we have SpyBot Search and Destroy on this as well, it's probably never been updated, which should be updated, and let's see this, so we, here we have the Spooky 2. Okay, so we didn't, and that's basically how that super anti spyware works. And it'll say if it found something, if, you, if it found something, it'll give you the continue to erase option. And so that's the super anti spyware program. Um, if you bought a computer from me, I don't recommend you update that program unless you talk to me about it first. Okay, so let's go back to the spooky, spooky two, and what I will do is I will actually, I will actually update these programs. Now this is searching for the generators. We don't have any generators. The single generators are. Not sure why that came up. The single generators are, maybe it's sensing this program, the single generators are only like $150. Ideally, you'd want to get the Generator X, which is a double generator. It does the biofeedback analysis uh, in about two minutes, and it also can run two generators at the same time. And so, Let's see, we're asking for permission to run this. Okay, so this is the USB uh, spooky driver. 
And so we load the driver for the spooky and finish that. Okay, so actually I probably should have stayed there to show you how this works. So in the programs we go to spooky and let me answer that. Call those guys and give them hell. Because I don't have an apple. I don't have a fucking apple, fuckers. <laughs> okay, so back to Spooky here. We had the Apple support call. I'm not an Apple person, sorry, but. And I'm not gonna rec. Uh, I'm not gonna ask for Apple support because they detected a breach in my. Apple software. They presume everybody has Apple stuff nowadays. And for me, it's just huh, kind of take what comes around, you know. And it just happened to me for P to be PCs that were uh, sort of uh, available. I guess to this. I already did that. So this is not the entire spooky program, which will. So let's try not exiting. Running in test mode. Okay, so running in test mode. So this is the uh, spooky two software, and then so they have presets. Let's see, uh, this will be detox. Let's see what we got. Uh, mm, contact. Okay, so uh, kidney and liver toxins. Okay, so here it says something about how to run the generator. And let's go over here to programs. Now here here are the basic programs. So I have also included in this computer the multi-wave generator, audio generator. So for instance, if you have um, abscesses or excel, if you want to accelerate injury or healing, uh, 40, 47 megahertz or 47. And then here, if you have a generator, that's fine. If you don't, then you, and if you get one of my computers, I put this program on it. And so this is the multi-wave generator. And you can put in your frequencies, any frequencies you want. Uh, and then run this program and it will play the audio frequencies. Okay, so that's the audio generator you can run um, using the Spooky program. So all these frequencies here, you can put in the multi-generator, the audio, audio oscillator, audio generator. Um, any of these frequencies you can put in there. You can put up to 10 frequencies and... Uh, here we have adrenal gland, uh, adrenal uh, gland balance is a frequency 20, 537, 1335, etc. So that's that's how to use the uh, spooky and the audio generator. And so, and the spooky software is actually free software. 
and you can download it from spooky2.com spooky2.com and they update the software once a year and it's free so thank you Lord Jesus um, and so this is let's see what else do I need to talk about this is Revo uninstaller this is an older version which doesn't have an update in it and so this is one of the programs that I use to uh, erase other programs it does a thorough job in erasing programs okay so this computer also has Microsoft security essentials which actually has been known to interfere with programs um, but I, I have personally never had it interfere with any of my programs it may be um, some sort of program that interferes with um, say for instance uh, a Photoshop program or something similar to that which I don't use so I've never had any problem I have seen problems with uh, Microsoft Security Essentials um, with other uh, people's computers and they're running uh, other various things that it that doesn't seem to want to work too well with anyway um, you can Google Revo uninstaller and see how to use it it's pretty simple it's a really thorough job to uninstall programs and so that this is the Toshiba that's going out to my buddy down south and so Hope you're going to enjoy it.